Uh, well, thank you so much for, for joining us tonight. And I want to start also by thanking the wonderful Glasgow Film Festival, a proud feature of the Glasgow, Scotland and International calendar since 2005, um, for premiering this particular film, um, quite incredible, beautiful film. And of course, to you, Nicholas and Bradley, for talking with me today about it. I'm, I'm really, really delighted to, to be able to do this. Um, the the film I, I I thought and and we've we've just seen it um, is is something that is incredibly special. It's not often you see disabled people portrayed on screen in a way that actually ref reflects our our true experience. Um, and I think that's something um, that you guys have really captured. So it, I'm, I'm honoured to to have this this chat with you today. Um, and so much of it I, I recognise, and, and I'll come to that, I guess, as we go on. Um, but I just want to start by asking Nicholas if it's all right. Um, tell me a bit about why why you got involved. Why did you make the film, um, and why um, and why did Addy decide to, to document his story in such such a way? Yeah, thank you so much, Pam, for for having us. I um, also um, I don't identify as somebody with a disability, um, but I did have a lot of disability rights activism in my family. Uh, my grandfather was from India and he was blind. He, he went blind at the age of seven, came to the United States, and then in the later half of his life went back to India to start an organization called the Lighthouse for the Blind, which was one of the first kind of um, movements to give uh, the, bl the blind any kind of employment and work opportunities in India. And my, my mom's sister has cerebral palsy and was very active in the Americans with Disabilities Act movement in the 1970s and 80s and um, always um, told me a lot about that time uh, growing up. And so because of their influence, um, a lot of my films have dealt with this issue, not intentionally, I think, but just something that I've gravitated towards telling. I think that the way our society globally treats people with disabilities or accepts them is a reflection on how healthy our democracy and society is as a whole. And that is not why I made this movie. I made this movie because of Adi and because of my first meeting with him, which happened when I was actually hired as a video producer to help make a launch video for the Be A Hero campaign. It was right after he had confronted Senator Jeff Flake on the airplane, which the audiences just saw, and he needed a short film, which is what I do in my in my day job, I make commercials for political candidates for causes that I care about. I come from a very activist background on disability and many, many other issues, um, as, uh, uh, as does Bradley, and I hope I'll share some of his work also. And when I met Adi, I just fell in love with him. Um, it was early 2018. Not only did I see this opportunity to tell a longer story, but there was this incredible urgency because Adi had already been sick for a year. He mm -hmm. was already losing his voice. And I just felt this you know, crazy feeling that I think people can, can understand having just watched the film, somebody needs to capture the last words that Adi will say with his physical voice. Mm -hmm. Of course, it turned out that Adi became only more powerful and more loud, as he says in the movie, after he loses his voice. But that just made me feel like there's no time to waste. And I asked Adi really the first day I met him if he'd be willing to open his, his world to us in this way. Um, and Bradley knew Adi actually before I did and might have some insights on why do you think Adi agreed? Uh, I, I believe uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, I don't know if you heard, but she lost, but if she had won. Uh, I was there, I was in America, it was brutal. Yeah, Adi was going to be in charge of reforming the Federal Reserve, putting representation of uh, unemployed people, uh, uh, poor people, um, uh, on the Federal Reserve. We were doing an action on behalf of the Dreamers in the United States, and the Dreamers are immigrants uh, who were brought here um, who do not have documentation, but uh, came here as minors. When Trump was basically uh, trying to take away uh, the DREAM Act, uh, which, which Obama uh, had worked on to find a path to citizenship for these people who had known no other country but ours. Um, we were, I, I went to this action and I met Adi in a Starbucks and was immediately blown away by his obvious sense of humor, his desire to be <laughs> in the center of the action. There were some Trump supporting uh, people, and uh, uh, I, I'm not saying this pejoratively, they were identifying as Nazis, uh, uh, sort of op op opposing our 
uh, uh, action and Adi immediately said um, he could still walk a little bit then. Uh, he was having difficulty talking, but he said, put the guy with ALS in the wheelchair, get him to the front. If they take a swing at me, it's going to be great publicity. And I was like, oh my God, I've never met anybody like you. Adi erases, he saw the power of erasing the distance between the personal and the political. And he actually, in the midst of the horror of, of, fast moving, potentially terminal disease, he saw the opportunity to uh, not transcend, but find meaning in his suffering by uh, using it as a weapon to alleviate the suffering of others. And Adi is willing to do the day-to-day -day, uh, work under the most extraordinary uh, conditions with joy. It's incredible. I think that that was one of the things that really struck me in the film. And it doesn't surprise me, actually, that both of both of you have told that story about how you come to know Addy, because it comes across in the film that you have that real connection and that you genuinely understand why he does what he does and why he does it the way he does it. So one of the things that my husband and I watched the film together for the first time, um, and both of us are wheelchair users, we've both been disabled um, for a very, very long time. And um, we've, we've never seen anything, I, I have to say, that really captures the experience of living as a disabled person with everything in it from the, the real practical difficulties of not being able to shower for 16 days, um, all, the way, all the way through to um, actually having to get in and out camper vans and, and having to take the equipment with you, like the moment when they take the chair, um, when they take Addy's chair on the, on the, on the van, on the bus, um, that is something that, that we're just so used to and it's never ever captured and I think the way that you guys captured it was incredible and what I thought the powerfulness of doing that um, also kind of complemented the way that Addy's personal and political experiences is merged as, as, as you pointed uh, as you pointed out Bradley and, and the humor involved in it as well I mean it is um, and, and yeah I mean the fact that you've just said that you know he said put the guy in a wheelchair at the front I mean literally it reminds me of something my mum said to me years ago which is you're going to face a lot of disadvantage in your life use every advantage you have um, and in something like political activism there is a, you know there are times when you need to do stuff like that and I noticed that somebody had said around the, the be the hero stuff and um, someone had said um you know is is this actually exploiting someone um exploiting someone's disability and um, how do you think that how do you think people reacted to Addy and the way that he the way that he portrayed not just his own experience but the way that he galvanized everyone else and basically brought that and forced people to see what they ultimately sometimes don't want to look at one of the uh, one of the my, I, my favorite moments in the film is uh, the wonderful uh, uh, Liz Jaff when she is asked by a reporter does she think that she might be using Adi's disability in order to make a political point and she mm -hmm. doesn't hesitate for a second she goes oh yeah absolutely yep. that's what we're doing uh, <laughs> Adi I would say is fully. Uh, you know, embracing it. He's not doing it in a sentimental way. He's not doing it in a disingenuous way. He is saying, don't take your eyes off me. Don't take your eyes off my, my community. Don't take your eyes off the insane fact that uh, we don't have equal access to healthcare in this country. You know, he is using what he, what he has. It's an incredible a uh, piece of political judo. It, it really is. And actually, um, Nicholas, you, you, the way that you, the, the, the bits you choose to, to, to show and to shoot are, are incredibly important. And you do, you know, the, the film captures everything from the political activism and the crowds to having Addy in a shower. And, and showing the raw reality of what it, what it means as a disabled person, as an activist of the people. You don't only have your political, your Liz's around you or, your, um, or, or others around you um, giving you the advice and support to be active. You've also got your, your friends and your family and your personal assistants because um, you need caregivers. So how did, you, how did you decide what to capture and how to use it? Because it's, it was, in my view, beautiful the way you did it. Thank you. Yeah, there was a lot. We shot about 300 hours with Adi. And even though the film, I think, in its final state feels like this kind of cohesive narrative, a, a to Z of Adi's journey, there was so many other detours and, and stops on that tour and 
big actions that Adi did in Washington, D.C., and the fight for immigrant rights across so many issues that we couldn't include. And piggybacking off what Bradley was saying in the, the last topic about Liz saying exploiting the disease, the, the thing that attracted me about the film as a documentary filmmaker, and I think this will resonate with the other filmmakers at Glasgow and with, with Bradley's whole career in, 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 in stories, is the movie is really about the idea that personal stories have power to shape our political discourse. And that's what Adi does on that plane with Jeff Flake. And when I first saw that video as a filmmaker, I thought this is so, in, this is an incredible film. This is a, it's vertical, it's 60 seconds long, the sound's terrible, the editing's terrible, but it is a persuasive and moving piece of cinema. And I'm very tool agnostic. I think some of the best stuff in the movie was shot by activists. It was shot by the person who went into the phone with the elevator in the elevator with mm -hmm. Ana Maria Archila when mm -hmm. she was confronting Jeff Flake, telling her personal story to power as all the women did during the Kavanaugh hearing and and people are doing today in the in the uh, many fights that are happening, you know, um, and from from, you know, the, the craziness in the news today and in, in the last couple of days in Europe where people are sharing their own experiences and humanizing what's happening. That's the power of, of cinema and that's the power of this movement. So with every choice we made the, uh, of the understory for this film was how do stories shape the way our society, our politics are constructed. And that's what we chose to include. And as Adi said, as, as Bradley said, Adi erases that border between the personal and the political. And so in every personal scene in the film, even when Adi is with his son joking around or with his wife at home, we know that that's only possible because the society has provided Adi with the caregiving that allows him to stay at home and not in a nursing home, which is one of the many issues Adi's fighting for today. And so I wanted all of those personal scenes to be inherently political and all of the political scenes to feel personal. And I hope that that came through in the film. It, I mean, it, it really did. And, and I think the way that, that those aspects were shot was incredible. It is incredibly inspiring as someone who is, is a political activist. It's incredibly inspiring to see a disabled person in that position and portrayed in that way, in a way that isn't inspiration porn, because so, far too often that's how disabled people's stories are portrayed. It's inspiration porn. And, and, and that makes it very, very difficult for disabled people to be seen as serious political activists. That then has, I believe, a consequence, of course, on the decisions that get made. Um, around around activism and, and around um, how we deal with things like Medicare um, because it's it's difficult and, and I think you you said it earlier Bradley about people seeing and actually seeing um, Addy in real life and being forced to confront things because people don't necessarily think of themselves as people who would actively stop disabled people doing things or make it difficult for disabled people and they don't often get a chance to see it and I don't know how many times people say oh it's uh, this isn't about the politics this is um you know this is about this is this transcends politics these are political decisions these are ultimately political decisions and so how important do you think it is that films like you that films films like you have made will be in how we get to change the minds of politicians because I think at the, um, near the end of the film um, Addy notes that um, you know you're not necessarily going to change the minds of the politicians but you can make the public look and and that's why I think that was that was so important so how do how important do you think that kind of film and the way that you did it is in in changing the political environment we're living in just now well, my my feeling about cinema as is is kind of what we were talking about with with storytelling earlier. As I see it, more of a tool that can be used um, to to um, sort of shape the the work that the activists are doing. And so maybe this is a good segue to talk about Adi and the work he's doing now, which I really want to make sure that audiences know. Um, one of the reasons he's not here with us today is because he's he's um, busy in the fight in the movement that Be a Hero was working on, which is still across the issues that we see in the film, um, fighting for universal health care, fighting for um, uh, Cal uh, California, the state he lives in, came very close to passing universal health care, um, and Adi's Be a Hero movement is still in the fight. And so um, for me, I see the film less as a, a tool to for the politicians to watch, although I'm uh, glad you're watching, Pam, and I hope it uh, moves, uh, you know, moves the needle um, for you. But I really wanted the film to be kind of a love letter to the activists doing this kind of work. And I hope that people not only get involved in the movement holistically, but also get involved in Adi's work. He's still with us. He's still fighting, as you see in the film, and, and audiences can 
can join and sign up at, at beaherofund.com and get involved in what Adi's doing. So um, I just wanted to make sure that people know Adi's uh, best work, I think, is still ahead of him. Um, and I'm very grateful that the film was able to come out in a time where he's, he's still active and um, bring audiences awareness to his story. We got to celebrate the LA premiere of the film in Los Angeles with him in person. And he got a huge standing ovation that um, I had promised him many years ago when we started this. And that was just a very, very rewarding moment for, for me. It's very, very much deserved um, for, for all of you um, that, that worked on this. And um, what, what did you both learn about life, I guess, in general, but also activism, disability? Did you learn anything? Adi made me articulate this that one of the reasons um, the, uh, the left is at a disadvantage, and there's a lot of reasons, there's some structural reasons in the United States, clearly. Um, but uh, one of the reasons is that the right understands that politics is the way you create your moral vision. And the left seems to think it's culture. And culture is really important, but I always make the joke that will and grace won't help you if you have a pre-existing condition. The right, <laughs> understands this. The right is basically serving um, a, a, a business agenda. And it's not an extracurricular that you get emotionally upset about occasionally and then engage in. You, they are there every day, every day ongoing. They get defeated, they're back the next day. I worked with uh, a group that deals with uh, gun safety here. And the best thing for them to study in terms of tactics was to study the NRA. Because the NRA, because they're serving a business agenda, they're at every committee meeting. They're blasting out, blasting out the emails. And Adi, you know, Adi doesn't, uh, Adi is playing a long, relentless game. He understands that you don't get a democracy, you got to make it every day. And if you don't participate, you're sentencing yourself to a gulag uh, uh, that is run by the people who will participate. Adi will not be defeated by the fact that uh, we didn't um, uh, have success in California recently. He will continue uh, there is no choice but <laughs> but to uh, to continue, and you can make incredible progress with that kind of persistence when you match the right's ability to remain engaged in politics. Yeah, and, and we see that you, you said is it you think it's the same across the world? It's it's, it's absolutely the same here um, in Scotland and the UK. And, and I think that is something that, that we need to learn from. And they, one of the one of the reasons I was um, so so inspired by by Addy's work is because of that relentlessness in it. So the, the whole film it is relentless. That it's yeah. like keep going, just keep going, just keep going. And recently um, we we did some work on uh, representation in politics. Classic question I get when when I I explain the the plight of disabled people and then the experience that they have in, in here in Scotland. And they say, well, why aren't they beating down politicians' door about it? And it's like because they're stuck in their bed without any care in a house that isn't accessible that they're dragging themselves up and downstairs in. Like this is why people aren't able to do it. And so there's that you, you've got a, an extreme oppression group of people, a, an extremely oppressed group of people. Um, however, you touched on this earlier, Nicholas, when when the person has all the things round about them, so they've got the caregiver, they've got the house they can get in and out of, everything's accessible, then the, the relentlessness that comes with being a disabled person and the innovation that you have because you just have to, to get out of bed in the morning is something that I don't think anyone should be losing out on, which is why it's so important that, that films like this get made, but also people like Addie's story gets told because it, it'll inspire other people to do it. And there's also a lesson in there for the left. Um, in terms of in terms of that relentless focus, um, and and I think that's that's something that we miss out on when we don't support um, disabled people's rights in society. If Adi can persist through the most extraordinary, uh, uh, extraordinarily difficult moments in his life, and not only persist in that fight, but but amplify it, uh, then none of us have any excuse. But um, but to keep on fighting, absolutely, um, Nicholas. I wanted just to quickly touch on the 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 role of women in the film because I know that you mentioned Liz um, and and we spoke a bit about Rachel as well, but also the stories, um, the, the the intersectionality and the the solidarity between the women's movement that, that you see at that moment in the lift. 
um, and and Addy's own experience can like what what made you what made you think to 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 portray that in that way? It was really in in terms of the women's movement against uh, then nominee uh, Brett Brett Kavanaugh, who was unfortunately confirmed. Um, although hopefully we have a, a better Supreme Court justice on the way now, um, but. With regards to that whole inclusion in the film, it was really to show one that this movement for justice is adaptable and seeing how they react in real time. And the other was to show that the film and what it's about at its core, as we were discussing earlier, really transcends healthcare. It's about how we raise our voices to power and use that to kind of captivate the the, the country in the way we were talking about. And so the echoes of what Ana Maria Archila did, who's an incredible activist and deserves her own movie, uh, which will get made someday. And what, what Adi did a year ago um, so, shows how universal this tactic is. And so that was why we wanted to make sure that the film transcended just that one movement of, of winning healthcare and winning the election and really show the power uh, of people power. And, and obviously being there in person for those Kavanaugh hearings was, was an incredibly difficult and emotional and um, for me, as a as a man and observer, revelatory time for me. I think my personal perspective was was shifted, and my eyes opened uh, being in those rooms and hearing the women share their stories of sexual assault. And I wanted to um, make sure that audiences got to see that through Adi's eyes, because I think it was very profound for him as well, as he as he says in the in the film when he decides that he needs to step back and let the women's voices uh, prevail. Um, thank you. I, I have one last question for both of you, if that's okay. Um, the, I, I think I've said a few times now that I think the film was um, so so beautifully shot and, and told um, and the story is, is is incredible and it does it from a disabled person's point of view, it really does it properly in, in, in my view. It really shows what it's like. It's funny, it's raw, it's real, it's sad um, and it's inspiring. Um, how do we get more producers, directors, how do we get more people to make films that portray disabled people and activism and that that interplay between the personal and the political, the way you guys did? Sometimes I notice there, like inclusion is, is a box that producers in Hollywood sort of check without embracing the richness of, of, of the storytelling opportunities uh, of, of inclusions. And that's something that you just, uh, it, it doesn't occur to people. It just does, it doesn't occur to them and you need to relentlessly push for that. We also need inclusion on the other side of the, uh, of the camera, which to this day tends to be uh, not only without representation of, of the uh, disabled community, but with, um, you know, I'm telling you, I'm looking, <laughs> when they say cut, I'm looking um, at, at a bunch of, you know, really wonderful, uh, you know, white dudes. So we, uh, you know, we just need to continue, continue to push on that. And it's difficult because young people have not had, uh, you know, grown up the way these white dudes have, where, you know, where their dad, you know, was in this business and they realized they loved it and they had the opportunities early on. So you need to provide those opportunities, storytelling opportunities, uh, you know, to to uh, to to people who we just have not given voice to yet. The only thing I would add to that is um, that public film funding is incredibly important for independent films and documentaries. You guys are doing a much better job of it in in Europe and the UK. Um, even though I know there it's it's still scarce, but in the United States there's almost no public funding for for documentaries, which is um, and and an independent film, which is really needed to tell stories that aren't inherently commercial. And especially with the consolidation going on with the tentpole movies being the only things that can be financed through that system. And to get public funding for the arts requires the same kind of people power that's required for getting public funding for healthcare or education. And so I think it's really important that artists stand up um, for this kind for funding that will allow folks with disabilities to tell their own stories on film because those folks are generally excluded unfortunately from the kinds of, of commercial work and that's why I think Europe has led the way with having robust film commissions in every country that that help independent stories get made and, and something we really need to fight for here in the US and strengthen in Europe as well. I'm, I'm sure filmmakers there 
in Glasgow have much to complain about as well in terms of the infrastructure, but, but in, believe me, it's worse over here. And even if you don't have a moral inclusive bone in your body, it makes economic sense to, to, uh, uh, to have a vibrant film commission. Uh, uh, there's study after study after study. There's no better way to spend public money than to invest in, uh, in storytelling. What are, I am excited, I haven't told Bradley this yet, and Bradley, maybe I can get you to come out, but um, in April, we're gonna show the film um, on Capitol Hill in Congress. Oh, um, wow. It's, it's, um, with oh, yeah. Jaya Paul and McGovern. Um, that will be a great opportunity because we're actually gonna show the film in the committee room where the movie opens. Um, and I think it'll be a very powerful moment to really bring Adi's story to Washington in a very literal way. And um, I do think it's important that we have um, you know, actual our representatives see this see this film and 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 be moved by it. So I wanted to um, share my excitement about that. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for allowing me to to ask you all these questions um, and and for listening to 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 my um, my bits in between as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you to the Glasgow Film Festival for bringing this to us into our great city um, and for for telling the story of of a quite an incredible disabled uh, man who I think will be changing the lives of many people, um, disabled and otherwise, across the world for a long time to come. Uh, so thank you and thank you for making the film. Thanks, Pam. Thank you, Pam.